Welcome to another episode of Trash Compactor, where we're going to be talking about episode six of the Book of Boba Fett. My name is Josh, and joining me today is James. Hello. John. Hello. Russ. Howdy. Mickey. Hey. And Murray. Oh, hello. And uh, what I thought we'd do today, rather than start with overall thoughts, I think we all have a lot of opinions about this episode. I think a lot happened. There's a lot to talk about. And I want to start off by talking about all of the Mando, Grogu, Luke, Ahsoka stuff that happened first, and then we'll move on to the Tatooine and Timothy Oliphant stuff. James, why don't you start us off with your thoughts on seeing Luke Skywalker and Mando and Grogu again? Oh, like, can we just have a Luke Skywalker show at this point? I mean, we could do it, right? I mean, this is like the dream Luke Skywalker that I've been wanting to see since I saw Return of the Jedi and read the expanded universe that now it's been retconned, that this is the Luke I wanted and always dreamed of seeing, and now I got to see him. I mean, because that obviously implies I did not like the way Luke was brought back into the universe in the sequels, but uh, Hmm. that's a whole other conversation, but I'm... (laughs) I don't know that it is a whole other conversation. I think. Well, gonna... I mean, I, th- I, I think they're connected a little bit. Yeah, it was that. That I can see story wise why it's interesting to go that way. Um, but to have this character you followed from you know episode four to episode six, and then we pick up with him being a sad, bitter Jedi who's disillusioned by the whole journey that we, the whole process that he's been through at that point was to me a little disappointing and not the way I would have liked to have seen the characters, especially as Russ has said before, like I read the expanded, you know, universe novels and the dark horse comics and Luke, that's more of the Luke I was expecting. Maybe we would pick up with, and it's not the Luke we got. And listen, I can, I can understand the merits of that storytelling. It just wasn't the Luke I wanted. So I don't discount like whatever the storyteller's vision was and, but um, this is the Luke I wanted to see. And to see, and to get a snippet of all the things that we knew he could do, like we got to see him fight at the end of Mando season two, but now we get to see him being master Jedi and teacher. And it was, it fulfilled what I wanted to see for so many years. And to be fair, that whole sequence on, I don't know the name of that planet, but the training sequence in particular with Luke and Grogu, I thought all of that was some of the really the most beautiful Star Wars I've ever seen. And it's interesting, too, because it's the exact inverse of the Luke and Yoda training on Dagobah scene. It's bright and cheerful. And Luke is training the Yoda, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, and he talks uh, about Yoda. He's like, I right, do a right. master named Yoda. Like, yeah. He's also like, wearing the same backpack from The Empire Strikes Back. Yes. <laughs> Nerd. I know. <laughs> and and for, I'm, a, I'm a Rebels Clone Wars person. So this episode, obviously, like Dave Filoni thread the needle so perfectly. But like to see Ahsoka and Luke and they talk I'm about, about Anakin. Anakin. Yes. They talk about yeah. their yeah. experience yeah. with his father. It was like moving. That was how, like. It's like, how can they not if they're in the same room? You know? yeah, yeah. Right. It, I mean, it means they must have had a talk at some point about Anakin. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Which even for me, who, um, I mean, I've only seen the Clone Wars and Rebels intermittently. I haven't seen them all. But even for me, that was very moving, knowing the relationship Ahsoka had with Anakin. And also for me, it just really ties up that whole relationship between Luke and his father, between Anakin and Luke, that the movies themselves never really do. Because, of course, you know, the final scene in Return of the Jedi, that's not Hayden Christensen. So you don't have that connection that's sort of like, ah, they're finally meeting and he's finally forgiving him. It's there in the text, but it's not there on screen. But the only other thing, too, that I want to say about before we really get into it is the technology for Luke, like Luke looked flawless 99% of the time. Yeah. Like, yeah, he was really, really, like really good. good. He looked (laughs) really, really good. And I do know that after Mando finale season two, there was a guy on YouTube who replaced the digital Luke that ILM had done with a deep fake that he had created. And it was head and shoulders above what ILM had actually done for the show. And I know that that ILM hired that guy. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. Yeah. <laughs> Isn't that great? They should they should retcon that, like how they keep adding like dancers. Yeah, the special edition of like, Mando. Yeah, yeah. They could. Yeah. They could just go back yeah, and fix should. it. I don't see yeah. why they wouldn't with all the special edition stuff. You're right. Totally. I, I don't, yeah, I don't want to get well, into that. Whatever. But, <laughs> um, John, your thoughts on that all sequence? I really enjoyed that sequence uh, for similar uh, uh, reasons of just like uh, 
seen the connection between uh, Luke and Grogu. Uh, also, uh, when Mando shows up, it's really heartfelt when he's really deciding on whether or not he should actually approach him or not. And I found that stuff to be very captivating. And uh, to the point where like, you see the Naboo starfighter fly away in the distance and Grogu raises his hand, I got kind of teary-eyed. I was like, oh, no, he loves him so much. You know? <laughs> so like, <did> I. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But, um, so did I. I thought it was maybe just because I'm a father now, so maybe that was it. But, I, but hearing yeah. you, I guess it's not just me. <laughs> I think it's just it, universal. Yeah. Uh, that said, though, uh, there are some there's some nitpicky things I had about it. Lay it on me. Okay. Well, well, first of all, if you see the behind the scenes of how they made Luke in the in the in the season finale of Mandalorian, you'll know that they use I think like artificial intelligence to make his voice. Like I thought he was dubbed over. Oh, so really? It's a, it's I couldn't it's, tell. <laughs> well, it's a computer that made his voice. And I was aware of that. And then in this episode, I think they did the same thing. And so all of his line deliveries mm-hmm. kind of sound weird. Like, like he's reading I, off I just, the cue cards. Yeah. And I think there's no reason why they couldn't just get another actor, maybe even someone like Matt Mercer who voices him in the video games to just do the voice over this AI created character anyway. Mm. Uh, so that's a nitpick. A very tiny nitpick is that I think they could like update his look a little bit. Like we know it's Luke now. They could just kind of <laughs> do something different with him. You know? but, but, you know, whatever. Tiny. Nitpick. Oh, well, that's interesting because actually if you look at the concept art that they have in the credits, he, he was wearing something a little different than what he was wearing in the right. actual episode. So I think so that was obviously a discussion because it's not what they went with. So no, they went with the same outfit that he had at the end of the finale. Uh, Russ, what's up? Yeah, I mean, I I do want to talk about Star Wars laundry. Like, you know, <laughs> we we see so many of these characters in the same outfits all the time. Uh, I think uh, Shadow of the Empire kind of addressed, you know, where they got some. Like, you find out where Luke gets this outfit if it's mm-hmm. roughly the same one, same style, and where where Leia gets the bounty hunter outfit. But like, is there some sort of self uh, laundering system, or are these clothes like <laughs> well, special it's solo, fibers? It's- in Solo, we see the wardrobe that's on the Millennium Falcon. Yeah. Well, Lando's wardrobe, yeah. So, but I'm just yeah. wondering, like, do these folks really smell bad? Like when they're when they're near <laughs> each other? Like, it's, are, uh, like maybe maybe the showering powers in the in the galaxy far far away it, are so it, good. No, <laughs> it's like cartoon, it's cartoon especially on rules, Tatooine right? with those, yeah. Yeah. especially on Tatooine with those twin suns and all that heat. There's a oof. There's a lot of sweat going on on Tatooine. And so it's just been on my mind. Like, but now this Luke's outfit does look a little bit different. Like it looks it's like slightly it's different. more, more robe like it's more kind yeah. of like pulled over. Like more, he's wearing more tunic a uh, in Jedi. Yeah. It looks but, like he's uh, wearing a Taekwondo gi in the last yeah. one of those scenes. Yeah, mm-hmm. exactly. Yeah. And they always try to, even with the original outfit from the original trilogy, they try to make him look kind of like a karate gi sort of student thing. Uh, I get it. I think it's fine. I, like it's, it's such a minor nitpicking thing, but it's important. kind of related to what I'm going to say now, which is my my only kind of like I would say like a uh, bigger critique about it is that I don't necessarily agree with the direction of him being so dogmatic. Yes. With the old you. Jedi teachings, yep. because I feel like Luke in the original trilogy. Now, this is the way that I perceive Luke Skywalker. Everybody has their own vision of it. You know, uh, that's why Last Jedi was such a big controversial movie. But um I think Luke is, in my opinion, kind of defined by his belief and his relationships to his friends and family to the point when he saves the day by believing his dad can still be good, you know? Mm -hmm. And so it's about his attachments that make him different and make him kind of special. And so in this one, he's like, fuck the attachments. And it's like, what? I don't know. And like, and what's even interesting about to bring it back to the nitpicking of the costume I just told Josh, uh, right before we did this podcast, I was watching the tail end of Return of the Jedi. And over the course of the entire movie, Luke starts off looking very Jedi-esque. And then he loses the cloak. And then he has a, a like a tunic over his like black uh, shirt. And then he loses the tunic. And then he has like a he has a gunshot on his hand to remind him that he's different. And then by the end of the movie, he's uh figuratively and literally stripped down to the bare bones of who this person is. He's basically just wearing like a shirt, pants, boots, and like he, he, the shirt's all like fucking floppy. He looks like anyone else, you know? And uh, I think that's like visual storytelling that kind of goes with the metaphor of him kind of breaking down to his fundamentals of what his priorities are. And then seeing him now, 
uh, looking very Jedi-like and very dogmatic in the old school ways of the Jedi, I think was kind of jarring because I was like, I don't know. I just feel like he would have a different philosophy. I think he'd well, be more Bruce Lee about this and less ancient master, you know, yeah. if that makes any sense. So that's exactly what I wanted to talk about because he doesn't learn that. He doesn't, nobody realizes that that's what made him special until he realizes it and Yoda realizes it in The Last Jedi. Which is a right. very long time to learn that lesson. Right. I just thought it was no, apparent because, before no. the sequel movies even came out. Yeah. <clears throat> yep. you know? to, to the viewers, to the viewers, but not to the characters. Right. And if they are saying, okay, now Luke is going to go off and rebuild the Jedi, mm-hmm. no one has told him why the Jedi failed, why right. they collapsed. He and just so thinks it's bad luck, maybe, or something. So he's following the old teachings and everything, and he's 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 trying to do it literally by the book. Mm-hmm. So this, to me, is actually showing us the journey from how we get to the end of Return of the Jedi to where he ends up in The Last Jedi. He's making a mistake. He's right. he's trying to rebuild the Jedi. Now I and hear you. He shouldn't, and he shouldn't do that. I hear you, and I completely agree with you. I think that's exactly what they're doing. And I also think as a storytelling device... If they don't show Luke Skywalker anymore, which I kind of hope they don't, because at a certain point, if you keep going back to the well, it's just going to go dry. And I feel like if they don't show Luke anymore, that works perfectly. But if they keep showing Luke, he has nowhere else to go, you know? No, and I feel gonna, like if. No, no, no. He's no, going to no, go I'm, down. No, he's going to go down to the last Jedi. But what I'm trying to say is that, like, if he. Well, it it, it, le- it, it kind of narrows the, the path of how he can be perceived that or executed as a character compared to if he's trying to do something new and he just fucks up doing something new, you know, that type of thing, in which case he can go anywhere as a character. But now it's like he's getting more and more and more confined into a very narrow path for his character. I think if that's the way they're going to do it, you see what I'm trying to say? I see what you're saying. I'm not I'm not uh, necessarily sure that I agree. I think there's a lot of places that they can go. It's just that we know where he ends up, obviously. But but I was really when I saw that him literally making Grogu choose uh, between the one he loves or Long Wolf and Cup, like like that was some fucking horseshit Jedi stuff. Yeah, I I was like, it was a great scene. Like, like, no, it was a great scene. Long Wolf and Cup. But I was was watching Mm -hmm. it and I was like, you know what? Fuck Luke. Fuck the Jedi. Fuck this. Fuck the Jedi. No, no, exactly. I was so anti Jedi in that Mm -hmm. scene. Scene, you know? But that's exactly my point, though. That's that's yeah. where Luke. That's why. Luke that's where he gets the last to. Je- in the last where Jedi, he gets, he's like, yes. "Fuck the Jedi, fuck all that." Right. I totally but, get it, but I just go ahead, Barry. Okay, because I'm gonna lose my mind because I hear what you guys are saying, and I'm not saying that I disagree, but I don't think I agree because, like, there's a certain amount of self realization, right? Like, so if his whole journey of being a Jedi is his masters with Obi-Wan and Yoda being like, you can't be attached to anybody. You're, you can't do that. And then he breaks that and like do- accomplishes what he does. Right. He brings down the empire and stuff like that. There would be a, there would be a self-realization in that of like, no, like kind of like very like, I don't know, Frank Sinatra or some shit. Like I did it my way type thing. <laughs> and there would be like, cause return of the Jedi ends happy. And where I think, since this takes place so close to Return of the Jedi, I think that that realization would still be there. I think what happens with Ben Solo breaks him, and that's why he starts scrambling to like, what did I do wrong? Because that's no because that's his of first the attachments. Fail. No, because of the attachments. Because he's like, he's like, okay, like I have to be Jedi about this. I know he's my nephew, but I need to do the Jedi thing. He does it, and that breaks him. But if he was defying, if he was defying all his teachings and accomplished what he accomplished, why would he then just months later or a year later, like revert back to something that he never even believed in in the first place? Because he needs to find out what the Jedi are to rebuild the Jedi Order. The mistake is that he's he shouldn't be rebuilding the Jedi Order. He should be doing something new. And I think that he. And also Yoda and also Obi-Wan. I don't know if they commune again in the new canon, but they probably thought the reason he won, he beat the Emperor, was because because only the son of Anakin would be able to beat the Emperor. I don't think they realize, I don't think even Yoda realizes but until would, Last Jedi, the reason he won was because he deviated from... But if 
Obi-Wan says, you know, if you strike me down, I'll become more powerful than you could imagine. So if he's still more powerful than you could imagine, and he's still not seeing the whole picture, that seems weird. Like then, then he's no different from when he was uh, like, uh, I think that was just like a man. Talking I was gonna say. But, but also <laughs> like, if he, like, like, <laughs> if he gets out. to, that's, that's uh, what I'm but, thinking. But I, I, I agree with Murray too, that's because it's one of the scenes where it's like, he gets to this point and we as a viewer after watching a movie series get to that point. So as you said before, uh, Josh, we know this. If all the viewers know this, it's like, then you kind of have to work with that expectation and you can't have characters. I don't want to say being dumb, but like, but like but not being knowing like, themselves being like at purposefully all. obtuse. And yeah. it's just like, we all know this. For the sake like, of so, story. It's exactly. Like, for so the it's sake like, of it's drama. weird, you know? What I think the show is doing, I think it's showing why following a dogma is bad. That's also paralleled with uh, the Mando story. Yeah, yep. yep, yep. Like, so, so, so we see this in the real world. Like, you say that they're being willfully obtuse. We see it every day. There are people who are doing incredibly stupid things when the truth is staring them right in front of their face, but they believe in something that mm. is preventing them from seeing it. Mickey. Yeah, no, I was just going to say like what I shouted out before. It's like, what if it's a fake out? What if Luke is really trying to get Grogu? Like he wants Grogu to pick the personal attachment because that's what Luke did. But at the same time, he can't mm, make it easy. So yeah. he's pushing, that's he's really actually pushing Grogu the wrong, like the other way to put pressure yeah, on Grogu. Do you want dogma? So it's not or as that's easy. That's fantastic. That's, and, um, that I mean, seems that like might Luke. be a reason that you don't see, like they, they set up like you don't see him pick because that's the suspense is what's Grogu going to pick. But what if the real suspense is what if what's Luke going to do? And like, what if it's like he picks a personal attachment and Luke's like, actually, you're, you're right. And B also, actually, I, was right. yeah, like, I, yeah, I was very disappointed. Yeah, I was very disappointed. It was chain mail and not some sort of like Viking helmet with like horns or something <laughs> like that. So, very, like, yeah. two horns on it yeah. <laughs> it goes over his eyes so that's a fantastic i mean that's a fantastic point yeah. now i'll be 100%. disappointed if that's if that's, that's not where to go idea, there. Yeah. and there's no way he's not going to choose mando because no. i mean come on well <laughs> so, yes well, yeah i think they're setting us up for like uh, a baby yoda reveal in the season finale yeah. of mando right well yeah, they, yeah. they want yeah. us to i mean the idea is that we're like which one will he choose why not both because basically how the episode has to go um uh luke's gonna potentially go to tatooine uh and the reason why he'd go is because he's bringing back grogu so i mean and for a whole melee style episode so grogu has to choose um the mandalorian but also i don't know i think he's a little bit afraid of lightsabers as reflected when luke's training and you see the reflections in his eyes and the flashback of when he sees lightsabers reflected in his eyes i think he's suffering from some trauma that he's not dealt with uh because how how could he have um so maybe he's not really into lightsabers i still think he should pick it because it'd be kind of cool if everyone just got a lightsaber not that grogu had any time to learn with it <laughs> but they both but they both go back to, to hold it i was gonna say he can hold it yeah <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, but I, I really do think that uh, he, he's either choosing Mando or both, and there's there's no chance he's choosing uh, straight Jedi course because as the show goes, they have to reunite Mando with uh, Grogu for the next season because that's where the money is. That's like yeah. that's what the fans want to see. That's how you can market it. So there's no way. And also, people pointed out that in the um, uh, the sequel trilogy. Um, Luke's it's no, it's noted that uh, Ben Solo is Luke's first student and so if Grogu is uh Luke's right. first student uh yeah. that basically rewrites history and they're not going to retcon yeah. the sequel and that's trilogy unless they, they want to a lot of people want that. that but yeah it's not gonna No happen. they double down with a few times saying like you'll be my first student so that's probably yeah. you're probably very right I mean, he's got that extra seat in the back of his ship, so there's no way. Well, that's what I'm saying. Grogu's Between the chainmail and and that extra thing, it's like it's yeah. a guarantee that he's picking the chainmail yeah. or. Or not, whatever decision is going to lead him back to Mando, because otherwise exactly. you you wouldn't have that stuff in the the show at all. It's because it's worse than a mislead. It's just like treading water. Like uh, not, <laughs> I mean, that is the whole series of Boba Fett so far. But um, <laughs> <laughs> I disagree on that point. But we won't get into it now. Murray then James. I think that Mickey's idea of it being like a false lead works because like to me that is more in line with the Luke that I picture I, as we all said we have different views of him but I picture from 
his self awareness that he would know, like I, not like in an arrogant way, I did it my way, but just like no, I knew something in me was moving. That my attachments is where my strength came from, and so he was able to find this balance between light and dark that gave him more power than any one individually. And I think he would know that. So for him to to kind of be like, do you want dogma or do you want you know? like true strength well but that's not even where the old expanded universe went the whole idea this whole time has been he rebuilds the jedi now we have found out more about what the jedi actually are and it turns out that they're not that great Mm -hmm. um and i also think again it's situational i don't know that he would know oh okay the key to my success in life is to is to ignore all of my teachings and and do things my way i think it's like well this was my father and I got through to my father and he's the one who killed the emperor, right? So I don't know that he knows that it's like, oh, the Jedi teachings are full of shit. I think he thinks it, well, that it was his father who did it and he believed that his father had the good in him still and and, f- and that's what it is. From I mean like from a standpoint of my, like a mental health standpoint, I t- so totally get like Luke never like always like downplaying his accomplishments you know like he saves like the galaxy and he's just like yeah but I, I guess my dad really did it i don't know i didn't really do anything except for like say you could do it dad you know like so i under <laughs> i totally get that but i don't that's not the impression that that i got and just that's really fair. really quick on the similar vibe i just want to say to james like with the the super depressed luke and everything like that um I, it's not going to be a uh, tangent but like i you know i uh, in college and stuff, I studied uh, like the biblical studies and every like great prophet that did any sorts of like tremendous works, like from Moses to Noah to Jonah, that they all are like cripplingly, cripplingly depressed, like afterwards, like, and you're just like, so you're like, you just did something like incredible, like, like you rained fire down and, you know, like did all these works of, you know, miracles. And then you're like the the next scene, he's like in a cave wanting death because he's so depressed and sad. So it's like, I, I kind of like, I don't know if that was any inspiration that they put into Luke, but like, that's what I saw when I watched it. And then also I was just kind of like, Oh no, I understand like constantly being depressed, like no matter what, Mm. but that's fascinating. No, that's very interesting. I want to come back to that. Uh, James, then Mickey. Yeah. Well, um, you know, um, I don't, then Russ, (laughs) <laughs> I don't mind that, you know, Murray, like that. I, I mean, I, I get it. I'm not like, um, I understand why for storytelling they did that with Luke. And I, I it's just not the version I wanted to see, but that's like most of us. with, mm-hmm. with, yeah, with yeah, everything yeah. Does. So, so I'm not saying it was not your brain. Yeah, I'm not saying it's terrible storytelling. I'm just saying it's not the version of the character I would want to see, but I can definitely see logically how you could get to being that character, um, especially what that character has been through. Um, and I just want to make a point, I guess, you know, what we're talking about with Luke's teaching, I guess, um, you know, maybe the way he's teaching, like, I'm hoping it's a ruse, like Mickey said. Um, my, my other thought is like, well, maybe this is his first student and all he, he hasn't been taught how to teach. Like I, exactly. I like, a couple of years true. ago, exactly. a couple of years ago, I got thrown into an academic setting of teaching and I'd never taught academically. And I went by the book because I mm. had no idea what's going <laughs> that's on. That's very interesting. That's, exa- that's, great. that's yeah. exactly what I'm talking yeah. about. Like he does, it's like now if his job, if he's supposed to rebuild the Jedi, he goes and he finds, he finds the books. He finds out how you be a Jedi and, and like how you're supposed to teach them and that's what he's doing right and he's, that's off a, mistake. he's got holocrons and books and mm-hmm. you know i'm sure the holocrons didn't say like well you got to be inventive when you make a lesson plan yeah. i'm sure he's like and you he's know. he's attached to the books to the extent that even yoda right in last jedi is like oh the sacred oh, were, jedi text <laughs> yeah he's like oh they were great right they're real page uh, turners to quickly interject not to backpedal or anything like that but I, I i just as a general foundation of like we have this discussion going on right now i love the whole thing with Luke and Grogu and Mando and everything like that. So I want to make, I want to just let everyone know that I actually enjoyed what they did. Oh my God. I hated it. It kind of came into conflict with the, uh, when I was like, Oh, like as other people say about the other movies, I'm like, mm. Oh, this isn't what I thought Luke would be like. I mm. thought he would be more self-aware, but at that being said, it's like, but like the last Jedi, I'm like, I believe it. I believe what they're showing me because it's not entirely off base, but it yeah, wasn't I- what I expected. In terms of like nitpicking, I think that for me, nit- like the thing that's maybe stopping me from getting the emotional connection that you guys are Luke with Luke is like, I couldn't get over the line delivery. Like it really <laughs> seemed like this was before I knew that it was like robotic. I literally thought that like maybe because of COVID or something like that, that Mark Hamill just phoned in like literally like on like something like this. Like they just told him, say this line, say this line, because none of it had that 
like the rhythm uh, that leads into another sentence. You know, like when you're talking, your words like go down before they come back up. But if you're just reading one sentence, you read it self proclaimed. And so like when he, he's not having like a conversation, it's more like you remind me of someone, my master Yoda, he was someone that taught me. And you're just like, what is going on? <laughs> yeah. I mean, maybe we could say that being a Jedi master makes you say everything uh-huh. like, uh, uh, <laughs> A Cohen or whatever it's <laughs> that <laughs> very much goes back to the last episodes where I talk about execution versus intention, and that's yeah, definitely an sure. execution issue, one hundred percent. But James, continue. I know. I guess the last thing I was going to say is like, aside from like he's never taught anyone before, he could also be looking at it, and I don't know how much Obi Wan's ghost or Yoda's ghost or Ahsoka told him, but he could be like, well, my dad had attachments and he killed everybody. So mm. like, if, ve- that, like, like a whole very planet, good yeah. point. He could he could think of it like like yo, I got lucky. Mm. Right, he could be looking. You know, like, look at look at the bloodline like that the I have. He's the exception, and, not the rule. Yeah, right. So mm. that's actually a very that's good interesting. Point. That's a yeah. I never thought point. about that. A Mickey, then Russ. Yeah, that's a good point. I just want to say, um, I like the bad voice because um, <laughs> I, I was picking up on these like vibes. <laughs> if you ever watched like when like movies they showed you in the nineties, but they were from the seventies and like <laughs> in like class yeah. or like those like made for TV seventies movies when you had like whoever was the B or C listed like Mark Hamill. And Mark Hamill wasn't that great actor in <laughs> the first place, at least in the early, early, the first episode, the first. Yeah. I and know. There was, it's, it's, it's a very, to me, it's a voice very, acting. Yeah. But it's a very, a very specific. Good point. Yeah. That's a very, yeah. very good point. Yeah. He knows. Well, he I knows know he became a good actor. Yeah. I think, I think early on. And, 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 and that's the thing is I yeah. don't think it's him. I think it's actually of seventies aesthetic or something. There's something like that style of that kind of dead end delivery to me. It's like, I, that just threw me back to so many like seventies, like, made for TV movies or something of well, so many blonde kids with yeah. mop hair talking yeah, like that. Yeah. <laughs> I, I like think that it very it much was the limitation of the programming yeah. that yeah. they had. Yeah. Well, the, the music, because yeah. they actually, yeah. I like that they brought back that kind of music that had the same kind of 70s vibe to it too. And so it was kind of just like, it's like, yeah, just kind of chilling. Like if there was a whole episode, like show that was that, and it's just like, we're just going to chill and talk about philosophy on this planet and very, you know, dead in tones to like string oh, music. I'd be like, all right, yeah. that's cool. <laughs> <The good> uh, <laughs> <laughs> no, but, uh, like my, my wife said something similar that like, it does sound the way he did so- sound in return of the Jedi when he's like, I am a Jedi, like my father before me, you yeah, know, like exactly. it, it, so it did sound like that, but I guess for me, it kind of worked in those small little doses. But when he's like, here's a whole like monologue that I'm going to read one line at a time into this like computer. I was like, fuck, like make it stop. <laughs> no, it's but, weird. One thing I was going to say, like I realized with like Russ was saying with like how uh, baby Yoda, I'm not going to do the Grogu thing. Baby Yoda. He's baby Yoda. Fair enough. Uh, That's I don't go. Really. Yeah. Yeah. He's baby Yoda. He should always <laughs> be a puppet. They should do what Herzog say. Leave the puppet in. You cowards. You coward. Uh, Believe, <laughs> believe in the <laughs> but um but uh yeah he's scared of the weapon and they and then that made me remind me the last episode when that mandalorian leader said that you know armor is for protection and it's not a weapon and so this is really going to be like right grogu's moment to, not just to pick out a connection to mando but whether he's a mandalorian or a jedi if he believes in a an offensive mm-hmm. although you know i, I think they would oh, say yeah. like a, 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 you use it to block a lightsaber is a parade. It's not exactly an offensive weapon, but mm. armor, you know, something productive or something that can be used to attack, I think is like, mm. might be a powerful statement for uh, baby Yoda to make. So maybe, you know, maybe I am wrong, but then kind of, you know, to, you know, to the point like James is making everything that maybe that's, maybe that's what um, Luke's going to realize. It's like, Oh, I lost my way from return of the Jedi. I got too deep into the books and now, and, and didn't they say something like, um, of uh, Rosier dancing, it's like, oh, the students like sometimes the, the student teaches the teacher, so maybe that will be what happens. Yeah, is that Grogu, Grogu will teach mm-hmm. Luke, you know, mm-hmm. that he should actually mm-hmm. go back to like what got him through like Return of the Jedi and everything. That's an interesting point. Mm-hmm. One thing I, I want to mention was uh, when uh, Mando shows up on Unknown Planet, uh, don't know where that is. Uh, some people have speculated that it's Endor, it doesn't really have it's like not fucking the, Endor the, no. it, it, <laughs> based, based, on the, based on the foliage alone. Uh, but but anyway, uh, I kind of like this whole like waiting for Godot, waiting for Grogu situation. <laughs> <laughs> he's just you know it's like they're making him a bench just to, to sit on. With, and yeah. he'll, you know he's he's sleeping on that. it. And there, there's so these spi- there's these spider bots building little huts, which 
I mean, I guess could foreshadow to uh, the sequel trilogy. We see that those huts aren't necessarily ancient Jedi huts, but they're built by spider bots. Yeah. That I don't that I don't necessarily know. Like, if we need to see it, it's visually interesting, but I, I don't really know what what that's about. Um, but one thing I want to mention was I think uh, one of the reasons why uh, Ahsoka is there, and possibly because you know they want their she's getting her own show, I believe. Right? Is that? Yep. Uh, mm-hmm. yeah. So, so they want to they want to keep her present in in the kind of the uh, the fan eye. Um, I think one of the reasons she's also there is to do a lot of the talking because they know they can't have a uh, 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 robot Luke do a lot of the talking. That a lot of the conversation has to happen through another party in order for them to like achieve a better Luke effect is to have him from a distance or minimal and reduce the total screen time that that robot Luke has. So I think something I did reason- notice was that they I- they the shots of Luke, a lot of them were wide. Mm-hmm. Uh, which I think went a long way, though I don't think it's because they were incapable of doing it really well. <laughs> the tar I just effect. it could be cost. It, was- it could be cost no, exactly, as well. It, yeah. Exactly. I think it was cost and time. Yeah. And they also cut away when he says a lot of dialogue, so you don't actually. Yeah. You're, you're, you're getting yeah. shoulder. They're, they're yeah. doing yeah. all the filmmaking techniques when you re- when you have to sub in someone for an actor, yeah. like, or like exactly. Yeah. So because there were a lot of close shots where he looked fucking fantastic. So yep. so I think the reason that's why the money it was yeah. insane. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. In terms of like what we were saying with the Jedi, like and and their dogmatic ways and stuff like that, I, I did get a the um, similar feeling with Ahsoka that you get with people that follows such like dogmatic things because she did the total like no you could see him if you want like and you could do whatever you want if you want to ruin his life you could totally do it like yeah. you know what like w- laying on like this like well that's the, we're very like religious like dogmatic like guilt like no everyone's free to do whatever they want if you want to hurt him go ahead hurt him yeah like, that like, actually made that actually training like that actually frustrated me because I was like, yeah. she's being so manipulative towards exactly. Him right now. She's not. Oh, Jedi mods <laughs> must be so tough to deal with. <laughs> <laughs> like, but the once again, and James can speak to this as well. The whole thing with Ahsoka was that she's not a Jedi anymore. So, yeah. so, so I think really what she was saying. And I think there's another way to look at it. Like when you drop your child off at school, for example, or if you've broken up with someone and you, they're trying to get over you. I think what she was saying is you were going to make it hard for him because he yeah. misses you. So that's more how I read it. Though your reading, I totally get that. It's very culty, religious cult uh, Yeah, it's vibe. like fake, fake um, choice. Like, oh, you got, yeah. The, uh, yeah. What, got, what got me through that? But also, I, I totally believed it, too. Uh, a, I don't know that much about her character because I didn't watch the, the other shows. But also the fact that Grogu is a baby. So it's like, this is going to make things... If Grogu was, say, like 10 years old, like as not like as like a human, like he was like able to like speak and be have an actual personality, Luke probably could show up for like a half hour, see him, and then leave. And then the oh, kid... You mean Mando. Probably, oh, Mando, yeah. Um, I, I'm sorry, Mando could... Sorry, thank you. Mando could show up, visit him for like a day, then leave, and the kid could probably take it. But since Grogu is a baby, that could derail him uh, for a while that Luke has to then overcome to get him back on track. But the way she went about it, I was like, like jo- uh, Murray said, is like, this is kind of manipulative. <laughs> you know, like yeah. you didn't really have a choice at that point when she put it down that like that. James, I need you to speak about the stranger in the desert, the bounty hunter that I know. <laughs> Cad Bane. Yeah, Cad Bane. <laughs> uh, Cad because- Bane. I have Hell lots yeah. to say about this. <laughs> okay, well, go well, because- <laughs> for it. Hell yeah. <laughs> I don't think any of the rest of us have seen him in Clone Wars, right? Uh, only like the two or three episodes myself, like in the beginning with two seasons, whatever he's in, and he's in Rebels. What, he's in Rebels as well. I've only seen oh, like maybe yeah. first two so, seasons I, of Clone Wars. I've seen like YouTube clips or whatever. So I will say that knowing he existed, but not really knowing his deal, I thought his entrance and his whole shit and his whole scene was fucking really awesome. And he was good, very band, scary oh, and man, very bad. Mm-hmm. Yeah. No, it was that three way I mean, shootout. Yeah. yeah, very sad that we lost uh, uh, Justified over there. But but did um, we? No, uh, no, 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 he's, no please. Oh, no, him, no. I think he got, he he got hit in the up. shoulder, man. Yeah, he, watch hit, him and Mantle all right, all right, all right. patching him up yeah. through and through. Watch yeah, the fine. playback, man. I mean, yeah. right I mean that's true. Shoulder. I mean, that, yeah, Fennec got shot. That. I mean, that's true. Fennec got shot in the in the midsection, the and she's yeah. fucking alive. Yeah. So yeah. No. Also, so the lasers are quarter eyes. They well, quarter eyes. There we go. But, yeah. um, <laughs> good. Uh, uh, but James, I want to know your thoughts on Cad Bane's appearance in the show, and your thoughts on where that might be headed, and how they handled him, 
what you think about that. Um, sure. I, I just want to say one thing before I get to Cad Bane, just because like, how dare with, you? I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> sorry. Just, <laughs> just to say like, from going back to Ahsoka, since I've, I've followed her for how many seasons we did that. And then we did it in Rebels. Like she is more of a Jedi technically than Luke because she had way more training and way hey. more time. Mm-hmm. And I will also say that she's sort of like playing, and I'm going to out of date reference, but John Stewart, like I'm not a political guy, so you don't have to listen to me. <laughs> Meanwhile, like she's like, she's like so steeped in the mythology and knows yeah. the break of the path that she's being a little passive aggressive there so that's all i'm gonna say like i don't know if that's her intention but the tone and the oh, uh, but to go back to cad bane um he's he's a great character um my main thing with cad bane is like dave filoni is like playing this huge long game which i've said before in fact br- bringing this character finally into the mandalorian and and I'm book of Boba Fett because now I think we're in the Mandalorian because I haven't seen, I, I was like applauding. Oh, Boba Fett showed up in his own show this week. Good for him. Um, <laughs> it's your own like, lines. Yeah. It's your own lines. But, but Cad Bane is to go back to our conversation with last episode. He is the other version of Boba Fett. We would have liked to have seen, or at least Russ would have liked to have seen. This is the mm-hmm. ruthless money yeah. bounty yeah. hunter in clone wars and in rebels. He doesn't have allegiance to anyone except what the job is what the money is. And if you get in his way, I'm killing you and taking what I need. And on Shagor, baby. Yeah. He is that guy. Yeah. And he is the other, this is like, I, now we're getting like Mandalorian is what we hope Boba Fett would be. Mm-hmm. Cad Bane is what Boba Fett could have been. And now we, <laughs> now we have like just Boba Fett has no identity because <laughs> Cad Bane is, is just the, you know, the Clint Eastwood, badass bounty hunter, Western mm-hmm. guy throughout true and true. He has no heart. <laughs> Love it. No, but once again, I have to stand up for my man Boba over here. He does have a character. <laughs> he does have a character. It's just not the one that that he he had does in he? the nineties. No, that's true. I'm just saying with like I don't know where they're going with it. I think it's amazing that they brought this character in and really are tying in again, I know we said like, is it fair that you have to watch seasons of Clone Wars and Rebels to get a full background of of two of the characters in the show? No. But if you're if you're watching them, this is a big like, wow, they brought this guy in. No, I mean, for me, who had not seen Cad Bane's episodes in the other series, like his entrance was super effective great, for yeah. me. I got so I great. got everything you just said from that one scene. So, yeah. so I think it was very successful. And they Even made him look he, so yeah. great. He, like, he looks ama- like he looks like the the three dimensional like animation they do. But like hi- like he look his, his looks amazing. And he's always had that look like he's been the cowboy since the beginning. So, mm. Mm. Uh, so very good. cool. Uh, Murray then John. Shit. What was I going to say? You John guys, and Murray. Guys, re- repeat everything you said. And they'll to oh, no, it was um, where they, they tried to double down on. They know that they're not showing us the proper Boba Fett or that's in our head because even our our Western dude, I forgot his name. Cat. Um, Cat, that's what I said. Um, he, <laughs> he says like, oh, be careful. Boba Fett's like a ruthless, bloodthirsty, whatever. And you're like, mm, is he? Is he? I don't <laughs> know. I mean, he like, <laughs> I, I well, have that, yet that to see That could be telling. That could, that could but, be like, telling. He, he oh, used maybe. to be. But did he say he used to be or he said he is? What I'm saying is what he's saying is not untrue from a certain point of view. When oh, he he says he says he used to work for the Empire. He was a ruthless piece yeah. of shit. He's using yeah. he's wielding his past. He's using it against okay. I, yeah, I guess I he's took also it, like, trying too to get much... the job done. So he's, he right, would say exactly. anything yeah. to manipulate well, the population. I guess I took it too much of like maybe like in a, a bad meta sense of them being like, guys, no, 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 guys, like. Just trust us. We're telling you Boba Fett's dead, <laughs> but we're making him like appealing. But also, he's he's just as bad as this guy. I tell you, just well, mark our so, words. But you also have to be aware, though, too. All these episodes were written and shot before any fan reaction happened, right? So, so, yeah. so they're not reacting to any of our reactions, at least within a season of story. It's almost like they knew, though, right? I think as a viewer, we still remember Boba Fett from the original trilogy, which he did seem like a killer. So, like you know. I think Cad Bane's manipulating the population by trying to get them uneasy to make his job easier. Mm. That was a tricky sentence. Uh, <laughs> and then uh, also the referring ones to are, way- John. No, exactly. <laughs> also referring to the way that we remember him. But to what I really wanted to say was that I l- I don't know anything about this character besides being aware of him. I knew what he looked like. So as soon as I saw his silhouette, I knew who it was, and I went, "Oh, really?" And then when he showed up, I thought it was. Tip top A plus perfect. And yeah. this is the first time in all of Star Wars with every single thing that I've seen where I actually thought the bad guy was legitimately scary. 
Yeah. Like, like and even when Darth Maul shows up and the door is open, he has to yeah. fight Qui-Gon and Obi-Wan. I'm like, oh, this is going to be a good fight. Yeah. But when he shows up in the town, I'm like, they're going to lose. Like, I knew yeah. no matter what was going to happen, I was like, Cad Bane is going to win. Like, I knew he was like Anton Chigurh and uh, No Country Falls. Yeah, yeah. Good reference, Mary. I was like, there's no way this is going to go well. And and when he lift up his hat and um, you saw his eyes and his teeth, mm-hmm. I was like, yeah. This is a scary motherfucker. Yeah, like if I was a little kid, I actually might like put the blanket over my head. You know, obviously, yeah, yeah, he was, I wasn't. Maybe a little, but like, but like, <laughs> <laughs> but I, but like, just watching, I was like, this is the first time I think they've ever actually had a guy that was beyond intimidating and went into scary level of bad guy, which I thought was very cool. Yeah. And the town like kind of knows, like Timothy Oliphant's character, like he like knows basically the outcome before it happens, right? Yeah, Not even, he like, even before he gets happen. there, he's like, clear the streets. Like basically like, I think that, that kind of like sold it too, is like when you see the characters not have any bravado, but they're all just like, mm-hmm. well, I'm going to try to get us like the least amount of fucked that we can be because like, this is the storm that the gathering storms yeah. coming right my way type. Uh, and, uh, and, and what I, I was talking about this the other day with uh, my other friends and, um, I love what other friends, John. I know you I don't have, have any other friends. Well, uh, this pillow and <laughs> this pillow. And the uh, blanket he used to cover the, himself when uh, exactly. had, <laughs> <laughs> What, don't you uh, see but, them? They're sitting right here. <laughs> yeah. Uh that'd be frick. No. Um so <laughs> when, I want to see the when, book of Babu Frick. I would watch the shit. Yes. <laughs> uh, my I think one of my favorite moments of the entire scene is he knows the deputy's gonna die. And when they, they have these intense close-ups right before they pull their guns and the look on Timothy Oliphant's face, he's trying to look at the deputy and warn him, but he can't take his eyes off of Cad because he knows yeah. the moment he does, he's dead. And so there's this literal struggle where you see in his face, he's kind of like quickly kind of going back and forth between the two of them. And he looks like he's grimacing and it's like trying to say like, you motherfucker, just go inside. And like, and then he knows the moment's going to happen any second and it does and i thought that was just beautiful execution and the incredible choice of camera work and directed acting. by david well, man exactly he, and and, he's, and he's actors smart. reacting to the situation i was but like this is, is just a perfect it's not quite right shot here. for shot but it is good band the ugly right with the three-way um a little bit showdown yeah, yeah. right yeah that's because that's reference. mickey and then uh james if you have time i would love for you to give your final verdict on the episode or or any closing thoughts? I, uh, first, best title of the whole, all the series, including, um, you know, the Mandalorian and everything. The Mandalorian. It's kind of interesting because if you don't know, they don't. I don't think they ever mentioned that character's name. So he's just to me, he was the stranger, um, and absolutely mm-hmm. terrifying. And I, I want to say he's he's not Clint Eastwood. He is uh, <clears throat> Lee Van Cleef, right? To, yeah, yeah, that's oh, totally. Sure. Oh, yeah, 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 no, yeah, very good call, Mickey. Yeah. So, so James, uh, before we lose you, I. I want to get your closing thoughts or final verdict on the episode. I mean, this is the best episode of Star Wars, and I thought that was last week. So, you know, <laughs> it, I, I don't like I, I guess I was thinking like, I guess they they are literally going for maybe the book of Boba Fett, except the book of Boba Fett's written by Stephen King or John Steinbeck, <laughs> because they have chapters that mean nothing to the <laughs> hey. main story in it or something like <laughs> John Steinbeck rules. <laughs> I'm not saying he does. I'm just saying like sometimes I just remember reading Grapes of Wrath and we had a, a, a metaphorical chapter about a turtle. So I guess that always scarred me from <laughs> that's like my favorite book of all time. You son of a bitch. <laughs> <laughs> um, I apologize to any John Steinbeck fans that might be watching this, and I apologize more for the uh, for the slight on John Steinbeck. No, I'm the only one left standing. Yeah, you know, yeah. I just was saying, like, it seems like I guess maybe it's a literal book that these are chapters that are going to tie into the main book, like next week, hopefully. I'm assuming, and I'm I'm looking forward to it. Uh, you know, I it, it seems like they they had this idea for Boba Fett. And then they're going with an anthology series almost now. And uh, I'm hoping it'll tie back in at the end. But, you know, I'm, I'm in for the ride, definitely. If not for Boba Fett, then everybody else that they've shown me at this point. <laughs> and and I'm, I'm guessing, you know, I don't know what to guess at this point. I was, I was surprised. I was really surprised we saw Luke and Grogu in the book of Boba Fett. I thought mm-hmm. we were going to have to wait till Mandalorian season three for that. So, uh, so was I. I was pleasantly surprised. Yeah. I didn't um, think we'd see Luke again at all, actually. Yeah. Yeah. I was pretty sure we were going to. Maybe because I knew that they had hired that guy and I was like, they want to be able to do as much of this oh, as true. they want. But yeah. About 
the book of Boba Fett, the title, there was a tweet that I read from that Alden Diaz that really summed it up. He says, it has never been more clear why this show is called the book of Boba Fett. Honestly, 100% unironically, the choice to add the book of makes so much more sense when you consider how we were introduced to the show even being a thing and the inspirational sources like the Bible, like the books in the Bible. It means you're changing perspectives or framing devices slash narratives, but it is still the story, whatever that may be. I'm being super vague here, of course, I don't want to spoil anything, but I think This TV meets novel approach is the goal. And somebody went on to say, the Rev Ty replied, who I assume is a reverend, he says, given the Bible something I know a thing or two about, this rings of such truth. They set out to tell the tale of a new era of Mandalorians and Jedi, and these are the stories within it. Like how the prophet Isaiah is found in the book Two Kings, but also has his own book. I thought that was very interesting. Interesting. Yeah, that's very interesting. Yeah. That actually kind of makes me feel like, well, I was going to say, Two, two things. Um, and the one thing was related to that, but now I actually think my idea is bad because I was thinking like, it'd be great if they just, they have all these characters and bring in that they got to bring back the wheel show where just every episode is actually just a different, like there's eight characters. There's Boba Fett's one week. Then the next week you could check in and it's Mando and the next week you check in and it's the Marshall type of thing. And it's like, that's just like a format of TV that there used to be that I miss that I think would be great. You could do, but, but that then kind of goes against like that great idea. What I, I like that person was saying of these, like each, more each season being a chapter of a, a book of this kind of religion thing, which is kind of cool. No, well, um, that's kind of what's happening though. Cause I actually thought about you whenever someone made a variation of the joke, the best episode of Boba Fett and Boba Fett's not even in it. <laughs> you know what I kept thinking is like this whole thing you said a few weeks ago, how TV can be anything and you were disappointed that they were sticking with the tv format but i actually think they are kind of doing something with tv that is not what we're used to we're watching this story this season of story as if it's like its own self-contained arc or that it's like somehow separated but what we're really watching is kind of what you're talking about it's not the wheel show it's the wheel universe of shows right so like right. So one season you get oh, we're going to focus mainly on what's going on with boba fett and i don't know how the other shows are going to handle all of the interconnectivity but that's what that made me think of was that like you know we're now seeing a tv show that is not really operating the way tv shows operate it's kind of operating the way a tv show within an interconnected universe of tv shows operates yeah totally uh something uh going totally off the structure of the show. Um, uh, Last week, uh, one of the things I I had thought of when I was watching the episode and didn't mention, and it kind of comes into play here a little bit, uh, is when Mando's getting his new ship. uh, It's the the Naboo uh, Starfighter. And I thought, like, that's too small to... uh, to keep a bounty like you can't like unless you put them in the dome section like there's really like there's got to be enough storage stow capacity for um, a pilot to have like an emergency kit have rations that kind of thing so there's always that like even like when nuclear on Dagobah he's got a whole bunch of containers and stuff like there's there's space and ships so that's not really a concern as far as where he puts his gear but he really can't put another person necessarily unless they fit in the astromech dome which is rather Strapping small to the roof Strapping so to the roof. so and like Hold your breath. so so a few brought up a few things or a case of carbonite. So Obi Wan in um, Attack of the Clones had that craft with um, the separate uh, starlight, uh, like, uh, um, uh, the hyperspace ring. Yeah, mm-hmm. the hyperspace ring. So a that could be a thing. Uh, B it's very telling of the direction of the show as a whole. Uh, basically. Uh, they don't intend him to intend for Mando to have any bounties going forward. Mm. Uh, that's not the direction that his character's going. He's going back to Mandalore. He has to purify himself and get the helmet. So when he when he's traveling this episode, like and he's traveling super fast and he's going to the planet and just the starfighter. Um, that's that's it. That's the new character for Mando that we see. Um, and so that really intentional, like I thought like, oh, there's a problem. You can't be a bounty hunter anymore. A lot of other people had these concerns. Well, it was a decision. Uh, you know, for a reason. So I accept that and the kind of the direction of the show. Um, and so I'm curious to see, uh, he's not going to be really a bounty hunter in season three of Mandalorian. That's, that's not, that's not a thing. So th- this kind of is showing us where they're, what they're thinking, where they're going. So if like, he can't be a bounty hunter. He's not supposed to be. Um, that being said, uh, like structure, getting back to the structure of the show, uh, and Boba Fett not being in it. Yeah. Uh, book of, I think, I think they kind of, 
they, they missed the mark a little bit. It should have been, they wanted a reason to bring characters together. They, they wanted a melee episode. It's all coming together for this one episode. They wanted to have a melee. They wanted to have original trilogy characters. Luke, potentially Han Solo is going to show up. You might even have a Leia in a cockpit. Like who knows what we're going to see. It's going to be an all out like brawl in this next episode where at some point, Han's like, Boba Fett? We're working with Boba Fett? Like, something like that might happen, I think. Definitely some reference to, like, didn't Boba Fett try to kill you, Luke? Didn't didn't he, you know, didn't he, uh, you know, <laughs> bring me to Jabba? So there's going to be some, I think there's going to be some of that, like, reckoning with original trilogy, Boba Fett. And he's like, no, he's different now. Boba's a different person. But then my real hope is that at the very end of this melee, he screws everyone over and gives me exactly what I want and makes it all, like, a big ruse the whole time. I'm, <laughs> I'm just... I'm, I just I, don't understand. Happen. Like we we have all these other characters that are shades of the old the old Boba Fett. Like, why are you so married to the depiction of this character that specific way? I just don't get it. I want him to put his helmet on and never take it off again at the end of the melee <laughs> episode. <laughs> I don't I don't have a lot of requests, but I that's what I want. I want him to say like that was not Boba Fett. I am Boba Fett, and just. And just go total ape shit. Like I, he was never like that. Even in the original trilogy, he was never. He never seen. No, but he was in the EU. Do. Is Russ's point, and Russ is, uh, Russ yeah, is a yeah, big yeah. fan of the EU stuff. EU the, forever. The- <laughs> we can almost predict the whole like a lot a lot of a lot of what's about to happen in the next episode with like joining forces and who's coming in like like i imagine luke skywalker's going going down to tatooine with grogu I, it's gonna be wild mm-hmm. i mean i would be cool for him to go back uh, home yeah no yeah, well if he's gonna there's bring... a lot of reasons why it's why yeah. yeah that's one of them yeah oh dude and he could see fixer and cammy even though that scene was deleted and i guess it's that would be cool. but that would be <laughs> yeah. fucking cool because in the last jedi novelization i'm going way off topic in the last jedi novelization <laughs> it starts out it starts out where he has a vision of how his life would have gone had he never left oh. and, and he imagines oh that's better than cammy. the movie <laughs> and he imagines Fuck you, man. The last shot is awesome. The the <laughs> and he has he has a vision. He's dreaming. He would be a moisture farmer. He and Cammy, and he would be living a quiet life and like you know blah blah blah. Um, he muses. I wonder what they're up to or like blah blah blah. Uh, so I know th- uh, that that scene wasn't in Star Wars, though it was in the novelization and the comics. So I mean, it's still and now the two characters are canonized on screen. Mm-hmm. So that would actually be kind of cool. That would be kind of cool if that was the whole reason why they had that cameo was to set up Luke, Luke and seeing them, them again coming together that could be cool this this episode was really really cool and um my wife even said too that like it just felt like star wars like it felt like a universe it felt like a get like not just tied down to one place but i do find like whereas they threaded the needle kind of like good in this but if all of a sudden you're seeing every character you've ever seen in star wars coming up i would j- it's just a little too winky at the camera and that it would like drive me nuts like i so i'm actually hoping that like i mean luke's already established so if he goes back to tattooing that's fine but if you're bringing all these other people i'm just gonna be like all right fucking stop like well we don't uh, need it's a I whole think it's exec- gig- i think it's execution dependent but yeah yeah, yeah. probably you're well right. i mean i mean the marvel I mean, movies is execution saying. dependent too uh yeah but they that's the thing is like it it falls flat very often in Marvel movies, especially now. And you're just like, okay, all right. Yeah. Uh, yep. Okay. And so I don't want that to be the same thing. I know that's where all like the money is now and the nostalgia grabs and like uh Avengers assemble type thing of every property, but still it just, I don't Oh, that's an interesting parallel that actually never even occurred to me. Cause I don't, cause I don't watch the Marvel stuff, but yeah, that actually lends mm-hmm. credence to what uh, Russ was saying, because that's, mm-hmm. uh, they, the they want the, the team. Yeah. They want the team build up. Like look at all these disparate people coming together, join forces to accomplish this one goal. So I do have to tell you, I wouldn't mind if Han Solo shows up because the <laughs> new Boba will. Fett has to reckon, has to reckon with the person he was. And the best way to do that is to have Han Solo confront him because the I... reason we think he's a bad guy is because because he took down one of our heroes, right? So I, for I, he was just audience, doing his job, just doing his job. What, like I feel like, and this is again, this is uh, a Marvel poll, but like I feel like Han Solo would be like, "Oh, you son of a bitch, you encased me in carbonite," and I feel like both of would be like, "I don't even know who you are, man. Like, I don't. <laughs> you're just like a job. Like you're I don't just, even. <laughs> I mean, like, that could I don't happen. What I'm just saying is yeah. for for the purposes of the audience it makes sense those characters have a connection that has something to do with boba fett's character arc with his uh transformation john then mickey or mickey then john yeah. i honestly don't remember who okay john 
Uh, th- there was like so much that happened. I actually had to get a notepad and write down. <laughs> yeah. No, uh, no. <laughs> so to answer really quickly, what you guys to go backwards uh, to a couple of points, uh, what you guys are talking about with the whole shared universe character thing. Um, they only have one episode left. So I feel like it would be suicide for them to try and cram in Han Solo and Chewbacca and Princess yes, Leia. Very much so. They can't, well, that, they can't do well, that. Well, that's, the only thing I'll they, say to that, though, is that's kind of what happened with the finale of Mando. They brought in Luke they, Skywalker. We never thought they would do that. No, no, but, that's no, 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 but, they, but they brought in one character, as Murray just said. They can't. They can't. All I'm put, saying. All I'm they're saying. Up. They, they can't do all of them. But I think I wouldn't be surprised if Luke shows up. I wouldn't be surprised if Luke shows up because it's established. And I think if they go a step further, it'll be Kira saying that she's Crimson Dawn and she's in charge of everything or something like that. Possibly. Uh, the only thing I'll say to that, though, is that so far the Book of Boba Fett hasn't pulled a move that's its own move. It's only brought things from Mandalorian. So we saw Luke mm. again. We saw Mando again. We saw Grogu again. Well, but they brought it, in Cad Bane and they brought in the character from the comic book, uh, uh, Nubaka and stuff. No, but I mean like an OT yeah. thing. I mean, like, I, I, I don't so know. So I, I wouldn't be like shocked. Moot point. I mean, at the same time, if they do do it, fine. But I kind of hope they don't. But <laughs> at least, like, yeah, at least I, I think that would happen. I kind of, I, kinda I think that might do. happen, that like weird? seasons <laughs> down. But, like, I think that might I be think like. It is weird. I think that might be like season five of The Mandalorian or something like that. But anyways, no, before I, I go off, I don't uh, think they're waiting that long. I think it might happen next week. But I, and I, I had and two I'm other excited. points. <laughs> I had two other points that I, I wanted to bring up before I. Uh, one was content and one was execution. Uh, Content-wise, since we're talking about content, um, I mentioned this to you, uh, uh, Josh, um, after we had our podcast, and I mentioned this to the other guys when we were still talking after we had our last podcast, but since it hasn't been aired, I'll just say it. I do think that they are purposefully showing Boba Fett having a lot of flashbacks to his father's death to establish that he has a beef with the Jedi and on top of that, he's still very traumatized by it. And given the connection between Mando and Grogu, given there's a whole dark saber thing, given that there's conflict between all these characters, I do think there's going to come to a point where Mando is going to have his life be in danger in front of Grogu or something like that. And Boba Fett either will be the person responsible for it or will be witnessing it. And I think he's going to have a flashback to his own father's death. Because he's also, as as Russ pointed out to when we talked about it, he has almost the same exact armor as Jango Fett. Mm-hmm. So I feel like that yeah. this is probably going to happen and Boba Fett's going to stop it. And um, whatever that's going to be, it's going to be awesome. But uh, uh, execution-wise, the whole thing about the series is strange because somebody uh, said this on another website, maybe it was io9 or something like that. And they were like, I wonder if they just sh- should have called the show... Uh, the adventures in Star Wars or something like that because um, it's like it's kind of going all over the place and it's like and if yes. they just called it something that wasn't Boba Fett centric they would have been okay mm. with the way they're doing the story but since they're like this is the Boba Fett show and for two episodes in a row they don't give us Boba Fett it's like mm-hmm. what are they doing and it makes me wonder um, from a filmmaking perspective who do you think like I I I wonder how someone can just take this entire season and edit it down to be more concise. Well, I, I wonder if they're going to be like, like if I thought about this, like could this whole season just be a two hour movie? Or you know, I think like, it does it really need a, to be like this long? I wonder. A standalone episode in like a uh, Mando season four, like this whole season could be boiled down to one Boba Fett episode, like how there was the Mando episode. And, and Josh, I, I think you're a fantastic editor and writer yourself. And I wonder if that would be like a something that you even think Do could it. be conceivably done Do in a it. good way. I'm not saying that the show is bad. Do I it. love the show. Look, Do how, it. look how devoted we are to oh it. God, John but it's hates just the like, show so bad. Oh, God, I'm fucking seething with rage. <laughs> but um, no, I, I, I actually, I'm, I'm thoroughly enjoying mean? the show. <laughs> but it's just like, it makes me wonder, like, could this whole show just be a two hour movie? Should have, oh, been, sure. like, should have been. Should have been. Because I've seen movies with way more content that are very concise. Like, 
Train Spotting is a tight 90 minute movie with a lot of fucking content. <laughs> you know, and it's just yeah. like, I wonder if Boba Fett can do the same thing with all their content. Boba Fett should not have gotten his own show. I think it was a mistake. And I well, think but that's kind of what I'm saying, though. Yeah. But that's kind of what I'm saying is that it's kind of not his own show. It's kind of like the wheel series to go off of what Mickey said before the idea of a wheel show where it's a rotating cast of main characters and someone takes spot. Clone Wars was like that a bit. It, yeah. It would have wor- worked if it were any other name, any other character. It would well, have been better. Or just it, don't it call it, it don't call it a person's name show. Call of, it of the show like, that everyone wanted. Just call it, it like not, Star Wars it, something else. Book of the Galaxies or something. No, but like yeah, we're talking about it, like the book of Boba Fett. It's yeah. the book of Boba Going Fett. Going back to it's the not, biblical thing. But it yeah. but it's his yeah. book. Tag me in. I'm fucking ready. <laughs> Mary's pumping. Well no, it is his book. <laughs> we don't ready. know we don't know from here. We don't know from here. It seems like to me I wanted the Bounty Hunters journal book, I guess, or like Boba Fett's bounty journal. Yeah, that's what I thought it was gonna be. Yeah, that's that's what we thought it was. Yeah. Like his book of collections or some shit that's what that's what i thought it was going to be like like punisher war journal boba fett's bounty journal something of the similar okay. that way yeah okay oh well that's it i mean it's I mean, tuesday I, hear that. I can't get also, my helmet off <laughs> <laughs> also because um that's how it's like you see him taking over in a very like gangster way at the end of mando so and then it's the book of boba fett so that's what you think but yeah and he kills bid fortuna in cold yeah. blood when he does it <laughs> his journal's like one day the rain will come and wash the trash off a tatooine <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> and i'll he's say like, no he's just doing pull-ups and holding his hands over like a <laughs> over a, a lit lightsaber <laughs> oh my that's god amazing. he's talking into a mirror <laughs> yes <laughs> he's talking to me the only thing I will say is that we don't know what the end game is. And we don't know how this fits into the the larger uh, what non obnoxious word can I say tapestry schema. Uvra. I don't Uvra. <laughs> like we don't know where this fits yet. And I am content to just kind of see how it unfolds and let it do whatever it's going to do uh, before I judge, you know, whether or not it should have been called something else. Um, I get the impression a lot of people are not of that same uh mindset so so it, it's uh you know i uh, judged based the on, whole time and then reassess uh, based my on, judgment no 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 no, no no sorry i didn't mean you guys i meant <laughs> well that's what i mean like, by like star wars just thinking about it now that like, we have YouTube. one episode we have one episode left and we're theorizing about this crazy finale that like usually is a culmination of like 16 movies and it's just like i'm thinking about it like i what what is the what is the shape of this show? Why do they call? I'm always thinking about intentions. Mm-hmm. Why do they call it this? Why do they format it like this? And like second to last episode end, I'm still wondering like why did they do anything? And then um, there were missteps. And it's not not necessarily it's not necessarily in a way that I think it's a a bad move, but it's like I can't believe that I'm about to finish a season of a show and still like not have a basis foundation as to like why anything is occurring like to, what's the, the story the, <laughs> like, yeah, like the no execution story. of it like yeah. why is it being said in this way and why these priorities is it possible you know? i mean am i crazy like i think it's pretty clear i think it's just it's well, I it's, mean, it's showing it's showing the transformation of boba fett's character and i think it's a, it's it's depicting from how what? he's <laughs> he's about <laughs> <laughs> exactly from, from what to what that's always my yeah, yeah they they from did, being <laughs> a bounty hunter because <laughs> murray murray's been all about uh uh, they should have shown uh, that that process, and we only have hearsay. So, like, oh, he's the worst ever, and we're only like in the past he was the worst, but we've only seen him as good as a victim of the Sarlacc. He he's been a victim this whole time, and he's had a real rough go of it, and he's just trying to get back on top. Uh, but so we've never seen him in his prime, and they should have done a flashback with someone in the Boba Fett suit showing him in the past really to build up the character be like oh he was real bad that's that's a real that's a real bad dude but he did it for the money it was his job it wasn't personal i guess what i'm, I'm saying a, i'm is an that apologist the, the f- well no i feel like i feel like i'm in the position of being an apologist the, oh no i'm a fed um, apologist for what he's done like his crimes he, oh, it was just oh, a job. Oh, oh, yeah. oh. he's an empire denier all the rant <laughs> didn't happen is what he's trying to say a couple things to say uh, first of all, I like John being in the movie mindset. I think I think that's something I want to say. Like we've been talking about this in TV show and everything for a while. And something I've been wanting to say is movies are back and they're awesome now. I think uh, 2021 is going to go down as low key one of the best movie years. 
in a while. And what I, movies and I think, are you watching? <laughs> I, I think Malignant, oh, dude, the Green Knight, dumb, dumb. I need movie to see last that. year was still that. better than ninety nine percent of the things trying to be serious on TV last year. I think A twenty four laid yeah. down a nice groundwork for the last eight years and just created like this awesome mm-hmm. movie scape of just fun, fun stuff, dumb stuff, crazy stuff. That's just like to me now that TV's kind of become turgid and like now. Movies are back to being fun. And, I, uh, I that's how a, you really feel. When, when Nick yeah. done, I have a rant that's going to go right off of that. Yeah. Oh, yeah. But um. But anyways, but the, I would say to John's point, though, not two hours. I actually, even though movies are getting too long, I actually think if this is going to be a spaghetti Western, it's got to be three hours. And then when you put it on a TV, it's going to hey. be like four and a half hours on TV commercials and you watch it on Saturday morning. <laughs> the proper awesome. intermission. Love which, it. Yeah. Yeah. Which it depends, depends, on, what, like, that's it why depends I, on what spaghetti Western. Some of them are some of them are like 72 minutes. That's true. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But but also that means I think we're leading up to an How awesome shootout. How deep that spaghetti bowl? Yeah. Oh yeah. That's like 100% if, if this is spaghetti, West, the next episode should be awesome. It should <laughs> yeah, be like an Joe awesome, Rancor, yeah. You know, wild yeah. bunch. Mm. You know, type of like yeah. Uh, oh, for shootout. Sure. I, I that's hope, clearly I, what they're doing. I would say I was I I predicted and I was scared I was going to be wrong about the um uh, what do you call it the Rogue Rogue One. Because I'm like, that was clearly riffing on like those 19, like 60s World War II movies, like Guns of Navarone and stuff mm-hmm. like that. And I'm like, mm-hmm. if they were really yeah. going to like stick with that format, and they were going to kill cousin. everyone. I'm like, and there was like, no way Disney's going to kill every character. And then they did. I'm like, that's awesome because that's, they were totally riffing on, <laughs> you know, on, on like the, the Dirty Dozen on Guns of Navarone. And that's what those movies did. And that's why that movie was awesome because it stuck to his guns yeah. with that. So I'm kind of hoping... I'm kind of hoping we get a lot of death. Maybe I, I think I think I think Marshall Givens lives next episode, but I think maybe hey. he's mortally well. Wounded. It's because you know him and I mean? Mando. He, he's going to sit in, in a room, room, mortally wounded, just gunning down guys as they're coming into him. You know, Alamo style or something like. Type okay. Of thing. Awesome. So so I got awesome. my fingers crossed to, uh, for an awesome spaghetti western for for that. But hell yeah. yeah. I but, think um, this is a, a perfect opportunity to jump in and give uh, some Kathleen Kennedy defense here because a lot of people scapegoat her for all this. They forget that she's been around since day one. She's done all the Indiana Jones movies and all that stuff. But like what I was going to say is um, I think when they were making Rogue One, she was the one that said it first when she was like, oh, they all have to die, right? Like, yes. And then like, mm. yeah. So like what I'm trying to say is um, people give her a lot of shit and they shouldn't. <laughs> I yeah. agree 100%. I think if, only... if, I think that anyone who says anything about Kathleen Kennedy on Twitter should <laughs> is worse himself. than polio. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's also, a question um, why they're saying those things. Yeah. I agree with you. I've been even if I really want to say this cuz it's, it's a joke but I'm serious. I'm actually now on the pro um Boba Fett becoming good mindset um based on one thing Josh said earlier when he was saying that 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 other bounty hunter was saying he used to be a piece of shit. And then I realized mm. I don't want to be the baby from I think you should leave. I want to believe that Boba Fett can change. And so, you know what? And I'm serious. <laughs> I am now, based on that, come around. To, I, I, I believe <laughs> Boba Fett can change and that he can be a good person. I, but do I we need that? He, he's no longer sitting in, can, in canteen. He's eating his like, sloppy steaks, you know? Yeah. No. <laughs> well, Russ, I mean, the do we need that? The whole thing is, I want to say this in a very polite way. I don't mean this. In, don't uh, even do uh, it. Just go rip yeah. it. Yeah. I think all of your problems with this have to do with uh, how wedded you are to the 90s expanded universe depiction of the character. <laughs> yeah. What, it, was for that, those that was who can't see, ring. he put it. He oh, no. mind putting a, a ring around his finger. Right, yeah, but uh, I still don't understand what that means. Am I just because he's married to it? He's yeah, married. He's married to, oh, he's oh, married oh, to the EU. <laughs> he will never give up on the EU, even though they but, left him for some other dude in Vegas. He will never. I, I, give and up. I asked you. <laughs> I've been doing a lot of mime work on my own at home. Can <laughs> I, no, I'm sorry. It's just me slow on the uptake. I don't have a brain. I have a leaky bag of urine in my skull. <laughs> <laughs> um. That might uh, be accurate. <laughs> yeah, no, I think it is accurate. Like, I don't. Do you think that's true? And if so, that's fine. That's fine. Th- this has been this has been the question for me that that you, you've asked a few times. Uh, no, it's it's not, and, and it's not that because I, I got to be honest. I've only I, my Boba Fett um, opinions mostly come from the Dark Empire comics, like above all else, and also he had his own yeah. Boba Fett series, right? Yeah, the uh, 90s uh, EU. No, no, the 90s not so much. Yeah, years. well, not so much the the, the novelizations as much. Um, more, more of the comics, but, but basically I, I don't like you took the Boba persona and applied him to other characters. That's fine. There, you should not have brought back Boba Fett. I made a bet that I lost with a, with a coworker, 
um, that they would never bring him back in a million years because why would they at this point? And I lost that bet. And I had previously said that was because of Disney got greedy. Uh, because they, you know, that's a, another potential cash cow uh, because they're playing on, on fan nostalgia, but they disappointed a lot of fans. And again, there was no real history written for Boba of, of, of who he should be because it's only had a few lines in a movie and everything else has been canceled. So they get to, to remake him however they wanted. What they did not do is really show us uh, who he is before they wanted to change him, which is, is Murray's point. And I, and I, I totally agree with that. Um, they made him a character like they made him a character um, where he's he's changing who he is. He maybe he's having a change of of personal conviction about good, bad, what is evil, helping people. All all that's fine, but it doesn't it doesn't fit uh, for for me what I thought the character should be. Not even thinking about what they've already done in in books and comics. Just like we know him as a bounty hunter, we do know who he was. He's he's the guy that broke up the trio and stole Han Solo away from Leia. And he was a bad dude. He's a bad dude because uh, he directly uh, worked against the characters that were following in the film. Yeah. Um, no, and also he worked for Jabba the Hutt and like he, he was a bad dude. Bad people. He's just he's just working. He's just making us. He's misunderstood, guys. Yeah. And but apparently was- he he was in some Clone Wars where uh, we see him becoming a bounty hunter and deciding to do all that stuff. So my thing is that. So first of all, I think what we have seen of him in the quote unquote canon Star Wars of uh, the OT and whatever was uh, in Clone Wars. I think that that's enough. But on top of that, I think they were also relying on the folk memory of who we all think he is. Yeah, and, they and, do that that with, um, and that can't with, be discounted. Uh, the though. elephant too. <clears throat> it, it can't be discounted, and it, it has been. No, but I don't um, think it has. I think that they're using it to show a transformation. Like that's why. Yeah, but it's I don't transformation think- from our our our, our memory of our, our opinion or memory to something that they want to make him to now. They never like if they had shown him on screen being the Boba Fett that we loved. Those probably would have been my favorite parts. Um, but they didn't show us that. They didn't flash back. They didn't build. Um, like he was bad. They're only saying he was bad. And, and based on what our collective memories are. Um, it no, does, but we've also and, seen and that the he one was bad. Episode, in the Sorry, and ahead. the one episode of Mando, he's ruthless when he fights. That like that was something that yeah. was most jarring for me. Not like, of course, we, the preconceived notions that we have from the few lines in Empire and stuff like that. But there, you see him when he makes his appearance in that episode of Mando, he's gnarly. He's like, so like you're just like oh fuck like this guy's nuts and then yes, all of a sudden yes. he comes back and he's like he's Milk he's toast. like a sheep type thing yeah but like it's um sheep i meant gentle not like <laughs> like following like, the wrong like, ideologies like, uh, but yeah. <laughs> um but like um the but all of that also happens post sarlacc pit so that's why i am struggling so much with this because they showed a, us that's what he's like. So unless they do the bait and switch and they, that's who he is, or if that's how he is when he engages in, you know, like kind of like Anton Chigurh, like he's such a man of principle that if he's fighting, he, there is no like rules there. Like he just, a his principles are, nope, this is the rules of engagement. Like There, there wasn't an inciting it. incident is what you're saying. There wasn't an inciting incident in yeah. your mind that changed him and we never got to see it. Yeah. And I, I guess I, th- I have to rewatch that episode because, like, uh, because, like, my impression was that, like, he's just at the mercy of these people who rescued him. He needs them. He he can't be in a position to, like, he's a prisoner essentially. There. Yeah. So, and also, yeah. like, when he comes out of the star, like, he's at zero. He was left for dead. He was gonna die. And like, they're dragging him through the desert. He doesn't murder a kid because he would never do that because he 100%. he was a kid. Yeah. Like, yeah. So, no. Not so, like, yeah. so I just feel like when we meet him, he's at zero. And but, we don't need to see. We, him we don't need to. Murray, to well, I think that. what Murray's trying to say is that he went from he went from that baseline to the same baseline, kind of like he has he hasn't had like a real. Um, he, he he like he gets to know the Tuscans more maybe, but he he as a person hasn't quite changed uh, that yeah, much from had, from beginning to he, end compared to other people. Aside from being tired other, uh, and covered in. Movies. Like besides being t- tired and covered in ass and stuff like that, when he gets out of the, <laughs> I thought you said ass the sar- instead of acid. Well, that too. You don't know what's going on in uh, his with his mods, but the um, when he gets out of the Sarlacc pit, like that, he has not changed. Like we don't see that he was gruff and that changed him or anything. So what he sees, I don't think matches up with what we saw him in Mando, 
But Mando takes place after he gets out of the Sarlacc pit because he has his armor. Yeah, yeah, like, but that's also that after the Tuscans were massacred. He's fucking pissed. But that's yeah. what I'm saying. Like, so what's happened? Like, everything that we, every, like, for lack of a better phrase, present day thing we see of him in this is post um, that the Tuscans being, then he's like, hey, I just want to, uh, yeah, if you want to put some coins in my helmet, I just want to say hi and let you know I'm the new guy in the neighborhood and uh, Bit Fortuna, <laughs> well, he's out of here and I'm what, the dude, I, so what, just give me a call if you need. And like, so that's all post uh, Tuscan Raiders also. What I think, uh, what, what, I, what I think we're getting caught up on here is um, you're talking about the way that he does the fighting compared to the way he is as a person now as we were just talking recently about a movie like nobody you know mm -hmm. or if yeah. you think about mad max or uh you think about that what's that ufc movie with tom hardy and joe warriors there you go uh stuff like that you think about like the crazy Warrior. guy and the like you think about like we we know some people in our lives too who are like on the person to person um they're they're your man They'll, they like, they have the utmost respect. They'll be, they'll politely talk to your parents, but then like all of a sudden they realize that they're in a fight and they're the guys that will rip your eyeball out. And I feel like Boba Fett could be one of those guys where he's like on the day to day, he's like, Hey, it's like, Hey man, I have no problem with you, whatever, blah, blah, blah. But then if it, but then if the push comes to shove, he'll put the bottle in your neck. And I feel yeah. like, and I feel so, like that, it's not exactly contradictory to show him being like, honorable and respectful I, and polite and also being like a cold blooded brawler when he needs to, because he just flicks a switch yeah. and he's like, I'm in fighting mode now, like a green beret. And he's like, now I'm going to fucking fuck hey, you up, Rambo. You know? What's up? No, but like, go. so, but it kind of makes sense, right? Because we love Mando and he's like got that paternal thing and he's uh, got a range of motion, but mm -hmm. then he also just, kill somebody in the last episode or two episodes yeah. ago just because it was too much of a hassle to take him in alive and he's like fuck it i just need your head i don't care chop them in half yeah yep <laughs> and so maybe it is something along those lines of it's just like no what like again back to the shagor it's like no like it, when i'm focused like whatever you know whatever this coin flip is i'm adhering to it like that's my principle so if it is just no part of the job i don't care how the job gets done it's getting done. And that could be the and, Mandalorian way. When you think about yeah. like the fighting over the dark saber, like maybe like, like the big guy was going to kill Mando. Like he even says some sort of line. He's like, this is where your, your path ends. And he looks like he's about to kill him. And then Mando takes up the knife and he fucks him up. Yeah. And then like, and I think one of the reasons why Bo Katan just doesn't accept the dark saber when he's like, fuck it, I yield. I don't care. Cause she's like, no, we got to fight to the death over it. You know, like, and I feel like that could just be like, the way they're trained in their culture. So I could see why that Mando is the way. And, that is the way. And I could see why Mando and Boba would fight in a very similar way where it's like, no, we, we don't want to fight because if we fight, I'm going to have to either kill you or put you in a hospital. I can't <laughs> just like push you away. You know, type of thing. Uh, you know, but another thing that, that brings to mind is uh, just to get back to the question at hand of like, why I don't like this Boba Fett character or why I think it's not right. Uh, one of the things is like, yeah, I'm gonna take over Jabba's holdings. It's like, why? He said he, it in that. It, he yeah, said because it in he, that because he's tired he, of he, working. Is that he's tired of I, working for idiots? All right, <laughs> all, all right, all right, Boba. Like that's cool, I guess. Like, but I don't care. I'm not invested in Boba's interest, and that's my problem. I don't care if he, and, and I don't care if he gets uh, Jabba's holdings or if he wins. I really think there's got to be something else there. Um, for me to to be curious, I don't think it's interesting enough. Uh, that's me. That's my opinion. Um, so I think that the is show is percent fair, and the show well, is you know, good in pieces. There there are things about it that I like. Um, I have a problem. That he's not wearing a jumpsuit under his armor, and I won't get over it um, because I <laughs> because I don't think it looks right. The shoulder pads are underneath the flap of the shoulder of the shirt, and it's wrong. But, I think it's awesome. All right, that's fine. I just I mean, <laughs> but like I don't think it, it looks right, and I. I think for me, I'm not I'm not invested in the character. He should have been a a side a side character that shows up like he does in Mando. Should not have got his own show. I do think it was a misstep, and Disney has made missteps with with their, with their Star Wars projects. It's happened, and I accept it. Like it will change and evolve. The Luke stuff was you know better than last time we saw him, so that was an improvement. Like there are things that I you know I don't mind. Uh, that are happening. But I, again, like it's, it's like, I look at crystal skull, like I'm not going to watch it anymore. And like, I'm not going to go back <laughs> to some of the star Wars stuff because I don't feel like 
it's as good as it could be. Is it the best we're going to get? Sure. Absolutely. Cause like who would have done it better? Who would have sunk as much money? So my, a lot of my problems just are just, uh, rust opinions, you know, like, you no, know? I mean, that's totally fair. Yeah. Look, yeah. look, I want to make it clear. Like, I'm not trying to pick on you. I hope it doesn't he's, seem that way. It's uh, that, he's like, always picking on me. No, no, my, my, <laughs> no, fine. but you represent a viewpoint that I'm really curious about. And I feel like I can have a discussion with you to understand it a little more versus certain people on let's say Twitter that I don't want to get into yeah, it because yeah, you can't with that. <laughs> yeah. So Russ, you just inspired me. Uh, yes. Another thought about um, yes. storytelling because uh, for some reason you made me think of, Oh, cause you're still hoping for him to like break bad and yes. all these things. And um, a lot of, yes you know, I was, I was thinking about when I was watching the episode, I was actually consciously thinking to myself when Mando's negotiating with uh, Timothy Oliphant, who by the way, Timothy Oliphant, Oliphant is the fucking man. Oliphant. He's the man. The st- Stole the, the fucking, fucking show. Yeah. He always he was, he's, he was he's incredible. the best he part was, of the entire I, episode. I, I, I don't know a man he's could in, be yeah. so wooden, yeah. but so awesome. Like he's he, not character, like he's he's I, like a stiff piece of wood, he's but he's awesome. awesome. Justified he's, is uh, fucking incredible. I, I think he's best. doing I think best. he's doing he he's working his his charisma to a he's so fine tuned so instrument, good. man. And the fact, he knows what he's doing. But the fact, um, Oh, just Body language, like his everything. character, mm. but his character, the fact that he literally is told what's in this container is worth more than your entire town. Yeah. And he just dumps out the container because yeah. it's spice. You're like, Fucking this guy's. And he like, looks at it with contempt. Yeah, that's as like Vito Corleone shit. Like, you know, I love like, it. Yes, no, yes, no yes, drugs, yes, no, it, no We do olive oil, yeah. you know, we do some gambling, they turn a blind eye. <laughs> that's a terrible Marlon It's Brando. a harmless vice. It's a harmless that's dope. Crime. But uh, anyway, what I was going to say was. While Mando's negotiating with the man, um, I was thinking to myself, does he even realize that he's trying to convince a bunch of innocent town people to help his gangster friend rule criminal empire? And then I was thinking to myself, this kind of reminds me of Game of Thrones. And even the storytelling is kind of Game of Thrones for the last couple of episodes. Because Game of Thrones, you'll be following Jon Snow or Terry or or Danny Targaryen, and then you'll just fucking leave them alone for like an episode or two, and then you'll jump back to them to see what they've been up to. And similar in character, uh, Danny Targaryen. If anyone who's ever watched Game of Thrones, they would know that she was the rightful queen of the Westeros because of her blood and dragons or whatever. Mm-hmm. But like. She never questioned why she should ever be queen. And the show kind of sets her up as like this hero. And then spoiler alert by the I end. I never she saw it a, that way. Yeah. And the, uh, spoiler alert by the end, she fucking flips out and just kills everybody. Yeah. And then if you really think about it over the whole show, if you're really astute, you should like, because there were times even when I was watching it, I'm like, why are we like, why is everyone so f- so behind this person because yeah. she says I am queen. Therefore, like, well, yeah. she is queen. But like, she, and so the point is not to get down that path. I want to talk about Boba. Boba is like, hey, I want to uh, rule this criminal empire, and um, I need my friends to help out. And like, hey, man, you're a cool dude. I'll help you out. And they're helping them out. And then like, no one's ever really thinking about the fact that like, what the fuck are we doing? <laughs> you know, like, because well, they're all but, they're all bad well, guys. But, but Mando well, but in particular, it's to, like, but it's well, like, but this ties back to is, what. He's this doing, is not a complaint, his, by the way. I, I want to yeah, make sure. I, this is not a complaint. Yeah, stop this complaining, is just, John. This is this is not a complaint. This is just like I was making me think. Like, I'm not sure if everyone is quite aware of who exactly they're helping out and why they're helping them out. Like, Fennec owes Boba her life, so I get that, and she's like, she basically has nothing else better to do, as far as we know, because they haven't given that much backstory. But everyone else, it's like kind of business as usual. And it seems very business oriented. And now that Timothy Oliphant and Mando are involved, morals are starting to seep into his, his scheme. And that might come into conflict, especially if someone like Luke Skywalker comes back to tattooing with Grogu and he's like, what the fuck are you doing? Hanging out with these gangsters trying to rule this criminal empire. So I feel like this is going to become a powder keg in a way that's beyond the pikes. I think this is going to be a thing where it's like, they really need to look into like what it is they're doing and why they're doing it as characters. I was just going to say the reason uh, with the game of Thrones comparison is one. Yeah. When people were complaining, cause it's like, and then out of nowhere, she turned, I was like, mm, or, or did you just not pay attention for the entire series? <laughs> but also, um, 
the reason why that works, like you made that comparison, but like if Game of Thrones was called the book of Ned Stark and it did that same thing, you'd be like, what the hell is going on here? Like Ned's like not in it, like hardly at all. You know, no, I actually disagreed like that. That would make sense. Like him dying started the whole story. The catalyst for the whole show. Or if it was, but I'm saying, or like the, fine, then the. The book, of, Hodor, Hodor. Ja- <laughs> the book of Jamie Lannister, right? Like, yeah. you're just going to be like, what is going, I understand what, you're what is going I understand on? You're yeah. What John was saying about the, um, about the, what's her name from, from Game of Thrones. Mm-hmm. I don't know how I was going to tie, I was going to tie this in somehow. I basically was going to say like, I actually appreciated that she did that. And then what she, Jack had to say with like, how I think he loved it because it's like, yeah, that's the American empire, you know, like we're the good guys. No, and, not only and then that, we'll burn like- down a city and we're like, yeah, we're good. Right. And I'm kind of, and, and I guess all, like, still me, like good, basically, right? I, I, I want Jack to watch <laughs> Team America Buffet, Fett, and I want to hear what he has to say about it. <laughs> <laughs> I would, I would pay she's money for it. She, uh, she, she, uh, the demand he'd, like, he'd be like, well, if Herzog's in it, I mean, it's definitely worth my time. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> Wrapping up, I think we're all really pretty excited, or at least looking forward, or at least curious about yeah, what's going to yeah. happen next week. I don't want to hear that. Curious, curious is for sure. Yeah, yeah. I'm excited. I'm excited. Yeah, it was good. It's fun. I, I like it. Yeah. You know, it, it, it's, it's something I said in multiple episodes, but like, I still don't know what they're going to do. I could surmise yeah. there's going to be a climax. There's going to be a shootout, a battle. There's going to be like a powder keg moment. I don't know what that moment's going to be. I threw out a couple of ideas, but like this show could really kind of go anywhere. And there is a level of excitement to like just not knowing where exactly it's going to yeah, go. I mean, season season finale of Mando was incredible. So I wouldn't say we don't know where it's going to go. We know that there is going to be a showdown. We just we just well, don't. Yeah, but we don't know. know the like, usually, like like the pun, when our goes to the, load up. Yeah, but like, but like well, when right. yeah when, when that, they go uh, to the Death Star, the Untouchables like, scene at the end. like in any other Star Wars movie when they go to blow up the Death Star or when the in Lord of the Rings when the Fellowship goes to the Black Gate. We know what's going to happen. We know that, like, oh, these guys are going to fight these guys, and 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 you know, blah blah blah. Yeah, but, but like, in any spaghetti western, like, yeah, but in any spaghetti western, you don't necessarily know who's going to come out on top. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, like, yeah. we don't like we don't like I don't know like which good guys are going to die, which good guys are going to betray other good guys. Yeah, uh, I mean, what like what left turns it's going to take, and that's what I'm saying. It's like I honestly just don't know where it's going to go because. Um, Boba Fett's going to die, and Fennec Shan's going to take over uh, the syndicate. Oh, the book of <laughs> Shan. Yeah. yeah, I think she's going to be uh, the new crime lord on Tatooine and just erase Boba Fett. I don't. If they kill off Boba Fett after this season, might as like, well. I, but in your could. point of view, but like, no, they could. But then it's like, wh- like literally, why? Like, what was the point <laughs> to bring him? Not even give him his own. Like, but like. Yeah, but nothing happened with him. Like, why would you just bring him out just to kill him? That makes zero sense. I have a super important point that this just reminded me. One of the factors of Star Wars that uh, we often don't talk about is how hard life is in the Star Wars universe. Like, like at any point, it's it's kind of like the old we West. Depends on who at, you are. At any yeah, at any point, <laughs> someone at any point someone could shoot you, take your money, take your stuff. Like, you have no defense. There's very little law, especially like post Empire. Like, sure, there's some uh, j- there's some like. X-wing police out in the uh, the atmosphere, you know, outside the outer ring of the planet. But like, there's really not much law going on. Uh, so you at any time you can be uh, killed or harmed or have your possessions taken from you. So living in the Star Wars universe, like young Boba Fett, uh, without without his father, like maybe you know he hops in the ship and maybe goes back to Camino uh, and maybe has some support there. But like. It was probably hard for him growing up, and he grew some real, real tough skin. The same applies to pretty much anyone in the Star Wars universe that's kind of on their own. The gunslinger, he didn't have a good end in that, in that Amanda episode. Uh, it's it's not easy to live in the Star Wars universe. So I feel like whatever happens, I think we forget that like people shouldn't live as long as they do in Star Wars, and we should expect that more people should die. I don't know if that's on like the, the bulletin board at, at the, the Mandalorian Book of Boba Fett office, if it's on Filoni's bulletin board, but like people should be dying more often more regularly and you should be like you shouldn't we take for granted that characters are going to be there in the next episode um we haven't seen a lot of deaths that's true yeah yeah it's true but like also i was just gonna say like i'm all for it but i think uh game of thrones did this thing where people want like oh who's gonna live who's gonna die it's like never kill off a character just for the sake of killing off a character if it has no point then don't do it because otherwise it's just shock value and Uh, we've seen that 
Well, it's yeah, not writing but, actually had, but a that huge, actually had a point. had a point. Had a like, huge, it's just huge plot point. Um, <laughs> no, yeah, but, I think what Murray is saying is that people who watched it are mistaking the oh, sure. for shock. The yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Like oh, so it's, like, it's you know, it's if there's no reason for if there's no reason for anybody to to die except for the fact that like oh man, it's such a happy ending and that sucks. Well, then it's a happy ending and it sucks. Like that's <laughs> what Spielberg does. Like I don't know what to tell you. Like if there's no reason to kill off a character don't kill like don't do it like it just yeah, doesn't make any it's, sense it's like when um i think there's a scene in uh one of the Zack snyder movies where lois lane is like abroad and she's with another reporter and he gets executed and i think Zack i think snyder i think said, they like, kill uh jimmy olsen that's what i was gonna say Zack snyder was like oh yeah that character uh he was actually supposed to be jimmy olsen or something like that mm-hmm. and to murray's point it's like why, why? Yeah. <laughs> you know like just yeah, to shock people be like well, oh yep. jimmy's dead anyone can die but it's yeah. like batman is, you know it's like that type of thing but well yeah that yeah. film that filmmaker is of a different quality well we, we, we will go it's a whole <laughs> other thing to just go into other universes and all that but uh, but i think it's just if they're going to do something I think Star Wars actually does it pretty well with like uh, mm-hmm. oh, and when, death. Usually when someone dies, it's for a distinct it's, purpose. Yeah, when yeah, I said Red Wedding, I was thinking shock. of shock value. I, like I understand that mm-hmm. there, there's a point in the story. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was thinking, yeah, yeah. thinking yeah, yeah. Like, like I hadn't read the books. So for me, like that was the most shock. I was also hate watching that show. Uh, but I, that, was the most <laughs> sho- that was the most shocking thing I had seen probably almost ever on TV of the sense of the volume of, of death and, and destruction. Um, and so, so I'm just thinking strictly on shock value, not on like story, uh, yeah. story mm-hmm, purpose. Mm-hmm. Like the well, Sarlacc, saying, the Sarlacc pit should have been more shocking, uh, death. I think, you know, we knew that that guy way back, you know, and like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, yeah. and, now, and now just, just done dead, lost the world and no and, real recourse and no, no funeral. And just sad. <laughs> <laughs> I wanted a burp or a belch, like a going out, like a last gasp or a tendril. You, Nothing. you, you want George Lucas's kookiness. Yeah. Because Sometimes I Lucas, do. Because if George Lucas were yeah. directing this, the, the, he definitely would have had a death belch. Yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> And oh, then somebody would have came and <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Then there would have been a song and dance number oh, for some reason. Uh, that that reminds me when I was watching the end of Return of the Jedi, Vader has that no no moment. Yeah. And <laughs> after after watching it for I don't know whatever time, but I was watching, I was like, I guess that's fine. <laughs> you know, like, yeah. like I, I I just don't care anymore about the about, like, well, <laughs> well, the thing, well the thing about but it's like I guess it's fine. I don't want to get off on a tangent Do it. to quote Dennis Miller, who I don't like anymore. But um, <laughs> <laughs> the thing that I admitted a whole bunch of episodes ago where Vader's no in Revenge of the Sith really never bothered me until I realized how much it really bothered other people. And then mm-hmm. now I can't unsee it. Mm-hmm. But if you accept that moment as a genuine moment, then the no that he added to Return to the Jedi really resonates. It's a full circle thing. Yeah. And for George Lucas, obviously, he believes in the truth of both of those moments. Yes. And so if it works for you on that level, then it's actually really appropriate is all I'll right. say about that. What I, uh, what I will always say, because it's always uh, execution, execution, execution. And I feel like that's one of those moments where the execution of it originally was perfect. It didn't have to do anything. And yeah. then and then putting the no, no in there was like, I just want people to make sure they really know the intention as to why Darth Vader is doing this. It's like, we know, <laughs> like we don't well, have to, well, that was it, it's, it's like thing. spelling it out to the audience. It's like, we, we kind of got yeah. it when he picked him up and threw him into a fucking pit. <laughs> but, yeah, but, like, but also but, you know, in that like, scene, what was so crazy about that scene. And even though like Jedi is not, you know, the best one, but like they, they gave, they managed to have when um, Luke's getting zapped. Right. And it mm-hmm. keeps cutting to Vader. Like, there's emotion. Yeah. You're seeing emotion from Vader, and it's literally just the same helmet that you've always been seeing. Like we are I don't projecting know. the gears turning in his head as it's happening. Yeah. But yeah, the there's music something about and the, the way it's light. shot and the, the magic of it's the yeah. magic of filmmaking, baby. The magic, the magic of, of movies. Making. It's the magic of movies. There's something that happens between the screen and the mind of the viewer, and that's where the magic happens. It's and like on that an agreement. Note, yeah. <laughs> one last thing I do want to note uh, before we sign off is that my sister and her husband got me a very lovely gift to mark the launch of the podcast it's actually a sliver of the oh, skeleton from the crate dragon prop oh, shit 
No yeah, it's shit. like a very, it's a very tiny sliver. And I just wanted to That's say awesome. thank you. I really appreciate that. And note that that prop was the skeleton of a dinosaur from the 1975 Disney comedy. One of our dinosaurs is missing and was, <laughs> 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 was thrown on the plane of props flying to Tunisia because it was laying around and they thought it might give them some more production okay. value. Yeah. That so, is amazing. That's so the awesome. Disney connection has been there since the beginning. <laughs> I, love I love it. Well, hey, Star Tours, man. I mean, they've always had a close relationship. All right, everybody. The melee, the showdown, the final battle next week. Oh, we just think of how much cover. we're gonna have a melee here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, we're gonna have to have like a three hour, three hour yeah. session. It's gonna be a long. I'm one. looking at you, Ross. <laughs> I got my, I got my brass knuckles. <laughs> <laughs> All right, everyone. I still haven't figured out a fucking sign off for this shit. So uh, goodbye, everyone. <laughs> <Fuck off. laughs>